In contemplating this month's theme of beauty, I've been thinking about just how much pressure there is from society, from the media, to be beautiful. It's almost like it's an obligation, something that we have to do because it's expected of us, that we need to wear the right clothes or the right makeup or be the right size or be the right shape to be beautiful in this young, sexually attractive kind of way, not just because it might be more fun, but because it's expected of us. We have somehow an obligation to do that. I don't quite know why. But that led me to wonder whether there was any kind of obligation or responsibility for beauty. Maybe not to be beautiful by some rigid definition of what beauty is, but to make beauty. Is that something that we as human beings might reasonably be expected to do? Things that just add beauty into the world, our own songs or poems or dances or decorated cakes or soups or whatever it is that is your own creation of loveliness, gardens. Is that a responsibility that we have to deliberately put beauty out there into the world. It's something that I've taken on for myself lately. I decided that I was going to learn to play the mandolin. And you certainly could not say at the moment that I am creating beauty. It's still a little on the dicey side, um, although I will say for the mandolin that it doesn't ever make anything that sounds really horrible. So there is that over, say, learning to play the violin or the clarinet where there's a whole lot of squawking or ironing cat sounds. The mandolin is, if nothing else, quiet. But there is something in me that wants to make beauty from it, that finds that it is worth it to me to every day sit down, even if my fingers hurt and they do hurt, to try, to practice to put in the time so that eventually, with work and a lot of faith and hope, there will be just a little bit more beauty, just a little bit more music out of that diligent, ongoing practice. Whether that's pulling the weeds in your garden, whether that's taking the time to jot down your thoughts, taking the time to sing to your children. That ongoing practice makes beauty. The person who has most impressed me in this practice is my friend Pat Hayashi, who remarkably decided when he retired that he wanted to become an artist. Not just to do some art, but to become an artist. Pat has devoted now years to studying art, and I have to say he's amazing. Just works of beauty. He invented a way of painting with smoke. He creates lovely impressionist landscapes out of smoke from a match or a candle. He's building his capacity for beauty through effort and lessons and originality and creativity, and it is wonderful to behold. Pat told a story recently that really captured my attention because it spoke to another aspect of practicing beauty that I think is really important. He talked about being in his dentist's office, and the office manager, Monica, told him with great pride that her daughter, Ariel, had recently had an article published in the New York Times. This article was about growing up with Crouzon syndrome, which is something that causes the bones in the head and face to fuse prematurely, 
so that as she was growing up, she had more than 20 surgeries in which they had to break the bones of her face to allow her to grow. Consequently, Ariel is spatially different. And through Monica, Pat wrote to Ariel and asked for permission to draw her portrait. Ariel responded that she had in fact wanted to have her portrait drawn, but she'd never asked because she didn't think anybody would want to do that. But Pat wanted to see her beauty. And Ariel wanted to see her own beauty reflected through an artist's eyes. And so Pat did that, drew her portrait, saw her beauty, shared her beauty, because that's an important piece of practicing beauty is seeing beauty. Seeing beauty not only where one might conventionally expect to find it, but everywhere that beauty is. And beauty is everywhere looking for beauty in the different ways that people are beautiful. Yes, but looking for beauty in the different ways that all of the world is beautiful. The shine on the back of a beetle as well as on the breast of a hummingbird. The complex rhythms of construction noise as well as of the babbling of a brook. The intricate dance that is traffic, as well as the movement of trees. The practice of beauty is the willingness to see, to be touched, to be open to finding loveliness where it is. And I don't know that that's an obligation that we have. I don't know that it's a human responsibility. But I do believe that it is part of what we are capable of, part of what belongs to us, part of what the world is worth. To walk in beauty, to find beauty, to make beauty, to be surrounded in all directions by the many, even infinite, varieties of beauty.